Alright guys, I'm back. Just a uh, little break, little break. Let's get back into finishing the yellow on these guys. And then we'll move on to something else. Alright. Found some different music to play. I, I don't have the, um, the soundtrack that I was looking for. I was looking for, um, Wonder Boy. I... It doesn't seem like I have it on my computer. At least I couldn't find it when I went to check just now. So let's uh, let's carry on. Let's see. Let's continue our experiment here and see if we can get this this uh, yellow on the gray here up to a point that it matches this. I don't really think it's going to happen, which means that I'll have to go back and paint this whole thing paint the head uh, white. And mind you, the, the yellow paint that I'm applying here is very thin. It's very, very thin, and so it would require several several layers to get to a point where it's like 100% opacity, I think. Alright, well... Okay, back to these guys. Let me move them back a bit. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Scooch back, dudes. And we're we're not just doing the heads here. We have to do the belts and the little the little decorative thing on their shins. Oh, I got to switch my brush too. Alright, let's get back into this. Yeah, so snowy out there. Gah. I was looking um, a bit more into non-Gundam model kits. Plastic, uh, plastic model kits. Plamo. Um, just because I think it will be a little different. Like if I were to get a model, I would I'm considering buying something along the lines of a non Gundam model kit just because uh I don't really have any attachment to Gundam, unlike uh unlike you, right? Like obviously uh, when I say you I mean Bacon. Bacon is uh, a big fan of, of of various uh Gundam shows and so uh he was explaining in his his stream, uh, yeah, that's Street Fighter 4 music. <laughs> uh, oh, quick little story. Let me let me uh, go off on a tangent here. So, um, back when Street Fighter 4 was popping, uh, there was a website that I used to frequent. It was like, man, I, I even forgot the name. It was like Canadian Gamers or something like that. It had, it had something to do with like being a Canadian gamer, right? Some small website like that. And they had this contest that you could enter to win the soundtrack for Street Fighter 4. It's like a two-disc set with all the music from it, except for Indestructible. <laughs> because when I won, I was like... Because, yeah, the, 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 the owner of the website got in contact with me and was like, you win, you won, so I'll need your uh, shipping information, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sweet, I can't wait to listen to Indestructible on loop. And he was like, uh, actually, it doesn't have Indestructible. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> uh, I don't want it. No, I didn't say that. But I was just like, wow, okay, cool. Still, that's pretty awesome. How do you not have Indestructible, though? Come on. And actually, the um, the the operator of that website and the guy who held the contest, uh, his name is Sean Hatton. And if you don't know, Sean Hatton used to used to uh, do features on Electronic Playground with uh, Victor Lucas and Tommy Talarico and all those guys. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, 
I mean, I follow him on Facebook. I kind of know him, but, like, I wouldn't say, like, we're, like, friends or anything. <laughs> it's just that, you know, he occasionally will, like, post something, and, or I'll post something, and they definitely, we definitely uh, are aware of each other. I guess that's the best thing, the best way to put it. <laughs> we're basically strangers. I forgot what I was talking about earlier before I went on my Street Fighter tangent. <laughs> oh well. It'll come to me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at um at at various model kits for robots and stuff. Because my whole thinking right now is that if I were to get back into it I would I would look into the wider world of of model kits beyond beyond Gundam because because I have no connection to Gundam. Uh, I mean, I I've watched some shows and some of the movies, but I I can't I can't really say that I'm a giant fan of it or anything, right? So there isn't like there isn't really anything stopping me from seeing what else is out there. And in fact, in fact, uh, Bandai Namco themselves make make other model kits, other robot model kits too, like like the one that. Bacon mentioned uh, in his stream. It's called 30, 30 minute, 30 minute models or something like that, and they're kind of built with, with like novices in mind. Not like really, not really super experienced uh, model kit builders in mind. So I think that they're kind of like easier to put together. I don't really care about that necessarily I just want I would just want something that looks really cool so yeah I'm just sort of looking at what's out there from any company and it's funny I was like is there like a lore and background to this stuff and there is <laughs> for 30 minute models 30 minute whatever it's called there's there's like a background but it's just like it's just like a real throwaway background. And in fact, the website where I was reading information about this from, they described it as Bandai Namco pulling a bungee. <laughs> as as if, uh, you know, bungee just kind of pulls their lore out of a hat. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> All right, all right. I see that there's some spots that I haven't touched with yellow. I gotta make sure the model's on on camera here. All right. Bacon, to be fair, a lot of people shit on that song when the game first came out. It's not until later in the game's lifespan that people came around to liking that song. Uh, Bacon Mecha Girl models, yeah, I I don't think I'll make Mecha Girl models, although I'm not I'm not opposed to it. It's just that what I have in mind is I'd like to build like a chunky militaristic looking model kit, something like if you were to like sort of put like like mecha models on a on a scale. I'm just I'm just trying to clean up here cuz all this sand basin material it's kind of like flaking off. If you were to put it on like a gradient with super robot super robots like Mazenkaiser on one end and then Gundam in the middle and then full on militaristic chunky robots like like a uh, front mission or votoms on on the complete other opposite side, I'd say I'm looking to build a model more along the lines of like a Votom type stuff, that kind of thing. That just that just appeals to me at the moment a little more. 
And another reason why I'd like to build a model kit like that is because um, I've been watching, like one of my favorite things to do when it comes to watching uh, YouTube stuff is check out like learning new painting s techniques and skills, not just for miniature building and miniatures, but any kind of any kind of painting technique or skill or crafting in general. I like watching people build like frickin' <laughs> like sharpened knives and and make a uh, make horseshoes stuff like that. But yeah, so um I I have watched a number of of videos of people building model kits and applying weathering powder, like weathering techniques like uh, dust and grime and oil and stuff, and like um, scratches, a lot of flaking off paint, like that you might see on like a tractor trailer or some rusty farm equipment. Yeah, I've, I've sort of looked into how to do techniques like that. Um, and I'd really be interested in applying applying those techniques to a model. I think that would be really interesting. Um, it's not something that I could really do with like these Eldar models, for example, just because it just it just really wouldn't suit them. But for something like a big chunky militaristic robot, I think that would be super appropriate. So yeah, that's another reason why I'd like to to get a model like that versus something like a model that's supposed to be really clean and slick, you know? But yeah, uh, that's, that's something I was, I took note of, uh, last night as we were looking at these models on the websites and stuff was, it's like, man, this, the world of building model kits has like changed, uh, since I last paid attention. It's, it's really interesting to see how it evolved, like this whole, the whole thing about like Mecha Girls. I, I don't know if that started with that battleship thing, those girls as battleships. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a totally established subgenre now at this point. <laughs> Okay, so we made a bit of a mess here. Let's try and clean it up. Good enough. And actually, that's kind of something that happened to me like two years ago or so when I was sort of rediscovering... Warhammer and seeing what the state of the hobby was over there. Like, it was about two years ago when I was kind of like, all right, let me see what's going on in Warhammer. And I was kind of blown away. I was like, holy crap, there's so many different things going on now. There's so many new armies. They've changed the names of some of the characters or the troop types or even like the alien race like like these guys are uh i i always call them just eldars right but games workshop changed the name so that they're now eldari which is to say a e l d a r i eldari <laughs> and there's a whole copyright reason why they did that it's kind of dumb and it doesn't it doesn't actually impact me as someone that just kind of paints the models and I like to read the lore and stuff, but whatever. I'm still going to just call them Eldar <laughs> for the most part. And yeah, that happened to Warhammer Fantasy too. Like, they changed the name of a lot of the fantasy races. So, you know, they're not just orcs. They're Oruks. Like, O-R-R-U-K-S. <laughs> and... And yeah, again, the, even when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy itself, they completely nuked the old world setting where where fantasy took place, you know, which was very much like Middle Earth mixed with like real 
real Earth history, right? And fantasy. They pretty much blew up the entire planet <laughs> and then created a more vast setting that involves, like, that's more akin to Magic the Gathering where, like, you know, you're hopping between different, different like, uh, planes. Different universes. Uh, universes? I don't know. Different realms, they call it. In Magic the Gathering, they call them planes. The characters that walk between the different the different universes are called uh, planeswalkers. But in in Warhammer, yeah, it, the the different the different they're not even planets, and I wouldn't call them universes. Dime and maybe they're and they're not quite a dimension. But in any case, uh, yeah. They changed all of that stuff. And it was like for a solid month or so, I was just really absorbed and trying to catch up and understand what was going on with the settings and look at the look at the new models that were out there and all this. It was really fun, actually, just learning about all of that stuff. Okay, that's this one done. Let's wash our brush. We always got to wash the brush, even if we're... Um, even if we're using the same color, we're applying the same color, you still need to wash your brush uh, periodically because paint will start to dry on the brush, right? And you don't want to be painting with dried bits of paint on it and then that starts to stick onto the model or your painting. That's no good, so always wash your brush even when you're painting the same model, same color. Let me just uh, slap some of this on here, trying to see how bright I can get this. <laughs> Bacon, I think that genre got popular with Strike Witches, basically World War II fighter planes, but they were anime girls. Okay, I was I was familiar with the ones that were battleships, but I think I've seen the Strike Witches too. So when it comes to that stuff, though, is what came first? Was that like a mobile game first, or was it a... Was it like a, an anime first, or was it just like this collection of characters with no real central promotional thing, whether it be a manga or a, or a, or a anime or whatever? Using this big brush, not supposed to use that one. Ooh, so I've just realized with this model, I did not paint the the yellow straps that go around the waist. So let's uh let's not do that right now. We gotta bust out the yellow paint, the white paint, to to pick that out first. So we can't, as I've shown with this model, you can't really just apply the yellow paint straight onto something dark like gray or a blue in this situation, because the blue will definitely show up. Ooh, is this Blanca's stage music? I forget. Actually, the Street Fighter 4 soundtrack is pretty pretty good. I'm digging it. I still think the Street Fighter 3 soundtrack is a classic, an all-time classic, can't be beat. Yeah, definitely if I were to do these again, I would I would paint the heads separately. <laughs> it's a little annoying having to do this now, but whatever. Whatever. I mean, maybe I could just rip off the heads. <laughs> but I'm not doing that. Come on. I'm not I'm not here to take apart my models. I'm here to put them together and paint them. All right. Well, whatever. Good enough for this guy. All right, let's wash the brush. 
get a drink of water and catch up on the chat. Do do do. Bacon, not sure if it started as a game or a novel or a manga. All I know is that the anime was really popular. Okay. I guess in some respects it doesn't even really matter in terms of um in terms of what came first like when you think about Pokemon like Pokemon was a game first but they they had this coordinated attack where very close the anime came out very close at the same time and the the card game as well very close and all three of those things created Pokemon like I mostly associate Pokemon with a game, but there's people out there, I have cousins actually, that more associate Pokemon with like the card game, and they still, like they're in their 20s now, early 20s, and yeah, they're still all about the cards. I get them while they're young. Bacon. Street Fighter 4 OST is good, but it's a little bit too electronic for me. Yeah, that might be why I like it, because that, that kind of has its roots in in Street Fighter uh, 3, which was very, like, drum and bass, uh, drum, and, drum and bass, uh, uh, like, electronic-based. And Street Fighter 4 has a bit of that with, a, with like, some orchestral touches. Bacon, uh, you prefer SF5 OST? Yeah, well, yeah, it's been a while since I played SF5, so... I'm not even really too familiar with the tracks at this point. Maybe I might even be kind of sick of it at, at a certain point, but I'd, I'd have to listen to it again to brush up on it. All right. Okay, so let's do... Let's do uh, two more of these models. I actually have a couple more to do with this... with this applying the yellow... But that can always be done off stream. Um, what I'd like to do on stream is just show generally what I'm doing. And then I can do the bulk of the work or any fine touches off stream. Because when I'm painting off stream, I'm a little more focused and relaxed. And I can kind of, I can, I, I definitely do a better job painting off stream. That, that'll come with time. I'm sure I'll get better at painting on stream. But, yeah. Do a couple more of these, and then we'll take a, another longer, another break, and then we'll set things up for uh, for the next segment of my stream today. Planning on uh, talking about how I how I hand prime my models, and then I'll turn that into a separate YouTube video. Blah blah blah. You know the drill. You know the drill. funny like uh we have like multiple kinds of hobbies i guess and sometimes like i'll leave a hobby and then come back several years later and be like okay it's time to catch up see what's going on and i think like for example comic books i haven't really followed what's going on in comic books lately so at some point i'll have to kind of catch up and read up on what's going on in the world of comics like like, I used to be very on top of that. If I wasn't actually collecting the comics, I would still know what's going on just by, like, reading the chatter on forums or whatever. But I haven't really done that recently. And, yeah, for example, X-Men, right? Like, that was like a line of comics where I, w I felt like I was always pretty much on top of what was happening on X-Men, even if I wasn't necessarily buying the comics at the time. But now I'm sort of out of the loop. Not really too sure what's going on. And there's always the possibility that whatever is happen happening in the comics might actually somehow wash up into the movies in some way, shape, or form. So that's another reason why I'd kind of like to know what's going on in the world of comics although that being said i feel like 
the point in which I stopped really actively following comics, it seems like Marvel, the MCU, has been kind of building up to that point. It's kind of worked out in a weird way that that where I stopped paying attention was like, it seems to be this is where the current MCU is kind of building up towards. And what I mean by that is the Young Avengers. Um, it definitely seems like Marvel's building up towards the Young Avengers. And I'm very curious as to if the Young Avengers will be a movie or a, or a TV show. I think that, I think that it would be a really, a really great movie. But many of the characters that we've seen thus far in Young Avengers uh, have been showing up in the TV shows so far. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure how much I want to spoil uh, for the comics because there's always a chance that Marvel will kind of adapt the comics and change things around a bit. So they, even if I did spoil certain things that happened in the comics... It's not a guarantee that that's what's going to happen in the movies, but yeah, it's really exciting to me seeing the Young Avengers show up and um, in various ways in the movies, or the movies and TV shows thus far. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the comics. Uh, for anyone watching, that's like a super easy recommendation. The, the first few volumes, the first two to three volumes of Young Avengers, super good. And it's not strictly a, a Teen Titans ripoff either. Like, it's not like there's someone that's like a Robin, where Robin is is per being prepared to become the next Batman or whatever, right? Like, with, with Young Avengers, it's not as linear as that. Like, and it's kind of built into the comic where it's a surprise. So, for example, there's a character called... Hulkling, right? And it's this green guy, a big muscular green guy. So his name is Hulkling and he's big and green. The obvious assumption is that is that he's connected to the Hulk in some way. But again, without spoiling anything, he's not. And it's really cool finding out about how all these characters, where do they come from? Um, and you find that out throughout the the first few volumes of the comic is how they connect and yeah that's a really cool comic to check out <clears throat> okay so as i said i've done i've done um a number of the yellow parts the base coat of yellow for these models we're going to go for something like this something along the lines of this which is far darker than what we have here right and we're going to be shading down to that with a kind of wash like a yellowish brownish wash but that's going to be something that we might do next time